Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we saw how a shift in the S domain allowed us to take the inverse Laplace transform by adding an e to the minus at term on the time domain side. Well, what we're going to do here is see how a shift in the time domain will affect the Laplace transform when we try to find the transfer function in the S domain. So here we have the familiar equation where the transfer function in the S domain is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times the function of t dt. Now notice I used a replacement variable. Instead of writing t, I wrote ta, but it still represents time. What we're going to do now is multiply both sides of the equation here by term e to the minus as, e to the minus as. And so we can then say that the left side can equal the right side when we move this inside the integral sign. This becomes e to the minus s times tau plus a f of tau dt. Now for a moment, if we let t equals tau plus a, such that tau equals t minus a, and we make those replacements, we put this in over here, and we put this in over here, then the very same function will look like this, e to the minus a s, times f of s, this is the transfer function, is equal to the integral of e to the minus st times f of t minus a dt. Now notice that when we use, when we take the derivative of both sides, dt will equal d tau because a is simply a constant. Now notice this should look very familiar to you, especially this side right here. So this looks like the Laplace transform for the function t minus a, not for the function t. Now, t minus a means that there's been a shift of the value of a on the function. For example, if this is the function f of t equals t, then here's the function f of t minus a equals t minus a. It simply shifted the function to the right by the value of a. So what happens now when you take the Laplace transform of this function instead of this function? Now, here we know that Laplace transform of f of t, if f of t is equal to t, is simply 1 over s squared. But what if we take the Laplace transform of f of t minus a? Well, because there's been a shift in the time domain, a shift of amount of a, we can account for that by saying if the function has a shift with the amount of a, that simply means when we take the Laplace transform of it, all we have to do is take the original Laplace transform function here and multiply it times e to the minus a s. In other words, instead of writing 1 over s squared, if the function of the time domain is being shifted by amount a, all we have to do is multiply the Laplace transform by the quantity e to the minus a s. So 1 times e to the minus a s, of course, is e to the minus a s. So now we know whenever there's a shift in the time domain, we can simply take the Laplace transform and simply multiply the original Laplace transform f of s by the term e to the minus a s. One more change. What if we want to ignore anything that happened before time equals a? Because otherwise, we would have to account for this part of the function right here. And if we want to ignore that, in other words, if we want the function of t minus a to be equal to 0 for the time period from time equals 0 to time equals a, then we have to plug in there one of those unit step functions that does not become 1 until t equals a. That's what this means u of a of t simply becomes stays 0 until time equals a and then becomes 1 after that. In other words, the function u of a of t is simply a step function that becomes equal to 1, this is the time domain right here, when time equals a. So when we multiply this function times the unit step function that starts at a, then we have negated anything that happens to the function before that. It's not valid until time equals a. And then we have a proper function with a proper transfer, which means that e to the minus a s f of s is equal to the function of t minus a when we take the inverse Laplace transform, but then we have to account for that by also multiplying it times the unit step function that becomes valid at u equals a. So we simply throw that function in there. Other than that, we can see then whenever we have an f of t minus a, and we want to get the Laplace transform, we get f of s as if the a isn't there, and we add the component e to the minus a s, and if we have e to the minus a s in our transfer function, and we want to go back to the original function in the time domain, 
make sure that we write t minus a every t everywhere where we find the t. And that's how we deal with the transfer, or I should say with the shifting on the t domain, in the time domain, and on the previous video we saw how we manage the shifting in the s domain. Those are two things that we should keep in our memory because it makes it a lot easier to deal with Laplace transforms and inverse Laplace transforms. And that's how we do that.